as offerings within this interiority at this quiet point near the at the as the equinox portal or way station dear gemini dear sagittarius first we'll look at where you may be holding pain at this time and where you may be holding hope <laughs> look at this unfolded too the ace of pentacles and the fool remaking the world renewing the world coming into the newness of our refreshing our ability to feel the newness and wonder in each moment and possibility okay where you may be having pain upside down upside down eight of wands so the eight of wands is passionate and uh, quick-witted and uh, communication art um, the ability to quickly um, make connections and uh, you're feeling pain there maybe it's an intellectual pain maybe it's a a mental pain it's upside down um, I've been reading reversals as an easing into whatever the energy is and making it easier but actually I'm reading this reversal in the more typical way of like it's the energy upside down this upside down feeling of not being able to communicate properly not being able to create properly not being able to make these connections whether within your own imagination heart or out within the world you know feeling stifled I think it's a feeling stifled. There's a pain in feeling stifled. And then the hope. What is the hope? I'm going to shuffle one more time. What is the hope that some of you Sag or Geminis may be feeling at this time? The way I read, and I'm new to reading general. I'm used to reading privately, not online, and for specific individuals. So the way I read, it's very much about all the, um, all the, energies and archetypes and so that it really with these readings it even makes even more sense to um, look at the other signs too like where where you know where is your venus where is your chiron uh, in your birth chart um especially i mean definitely your moon and your rising anyway where's their hope and it comes up as the five the five of pentacles so it's this lonely journey this difficult hardship um, but the hope i think is in the companionship you know and the beauty and the structure for warmth even though you're not inside there but that it's a possibility to gain entry and it's to gain entry in a new way that doesn't feel stifled, that doesn't feel lacking or dispossessed or disinvited. Doesn't feel sorrowful. Your hope is to move together through this difficult time. That's your hope. Okay. This difficult time of having been stifled or still feeling stifled. What do the ancestors offer to you at this time? I'm going to for the ancestors. I often like to use my oldest deck. Which is the Rider Waite. I mean, and I've also had it for, the, this is the, this is the only deck I had for decades before I fully came into allowing myself, allowing myself to acknowledge and develop um, ways of knowing that felt like I wasn't allowed to have magic. Your ancestors offer you, offer you your own magic, your own capability um, of discerning 
and communicating and making without being stifled and without feeling left out of journeying in this world without feeling dispossessed. Okay. I might draw another one for the ancestors. Actually, I'm feeling like I should draw one here from this little deck. Also from the ancestors. And the ancestors are, you know, they're with us, just as the, which we'll look at next, our, our descendants are with us. You know, if we think of time, if we understand time as a field rather than a line or even a spiral. Anchor. Anchor. Okay, the magician is a type of anchor. I call myself an anchor right on this channel because that's what feels most right to me. I love the Sky Priestess, uh, her videos. Um, I feel like an anchor right though. It feels like a solitary work to do this work, but um, and in others of my work and my other ventures. Uh, but this anchor shows us that even when we feel most alone, most outside the accepted structures, we, um, we are anchored in this energy of magic that is our inheritance and will be our legacy. As humans, our magic and joy exists on earth and we, we only have to It's not only, it can be difficult with the, everything that's, you know, entrapped us, but we only have to see it. Two of Wands, it's an anticipation card. It's a steady, you know, typically there's a, a solitary figure standing between two Wands. Um, it's an anticipation of it's a readiness, it's a receptivity, it's a receptivity and it comes and, and it comes to you more easily than it may have in the past. So whether it's receiving, you know, grounding down energies or receiving, you know, love or, or success as you define those on earth. Um, you are able to receive, you are able to receive and anchor and create. Knight of Cups, Knight of Cups. I think this came up in the Libra reading. It's also a feeling of this inheritance and um, sort of new beginning, a new movement in the ways that we carry and understand our emotions and perhaps with also with those emotions are our, our acknowledgement and understanding of, of many things that have been sort of disallowed in our culture, at least in the culture I live in here in the U.S. Not much room for emotion, not much room for um, contemplation in the ways that we've set up our structures of education, economy, etc. So, you know, that comes down to us through the ages, but so does this, so does this legacy of contemplation, legacy of, of consideration and, and um, moving from the heart, moving, you know, with the knowledge of, that comes through our emotional senses. Okay, that's enough probably for the ancestors for now. Thank you, dear ancestors, and uh, the, all of this energy is available to you, and they hold you close and love you. And we are all anchorites.
Okay, and then what is coming is offered to you from the energy of those who will come after you. And I've been quoting, I think, in every reading lately, um, and possibly slightly misquoting <laughs> Matilda Jocelyn Gage, an ab abolitionist and suffragette from the 19th century in the U.S., um, who said something to the effect of the women of today are the thoughts and prayers of their mothers and grandmothers embodied and made alive. And you can have that be, be engendered as well and or relate to any anyone who's felt stuck in the categories in which they find themselves born into and understood through or misunderstood through. Look at the joy of our descendants naked running in their bodies on the body of the earth, in which we are part of the body of the earth. And dancing. And dancing. A holy kind of dancing. A holy kind of running. i get one more. my best shuffle ever. Eight of Cups. So this movement into the future, you know, away from ways of holding emotion that were perhaps too constrictive and caused pain, caused, caused trauma even, caused, you know. But look at this, this young person moving away from that. A holy kind of dancing, an embodied joy. <laughs> 